Okay, this is a bit of a remake. It's one that I did a while ago. Probably one of my favorite techniques as well for painting in light. I thought I'd bring it up to date in Photoshop CS6 because I had changed the technique a little bit as well. The other thing I will point out, you can follow along with this in all versions of Photoshop and in Photoshop Elements, and I will be pointing out the workarounds as we make our way through. Now, what I thought I saw when I fired the shutter was a sort of clump of bluebells, if that's the right word for them, but there was a, you know, this bluebells in a nice pool of light. However, when I downloaded it, I thought, okay, who took my camera? And uh, the other thing, then I realized, well, hang on a second, if I'd have taken it off matrix metering and put it onto spot metering, yes, I would have had the picture I was after. But then, no, you wouldn't be sat here watching this video. So, we're going to take a look at darkening the picture down. We're going to take a look at actually removing, I find these here just a little bit too intrusive in the picture. We're then going to take a look at how we can actually sort of move the lighting around in the image before coming in and then changing the color of the bluebells themselves. Right, to make a start, we're going to be using blend modes to darken the picture down. Now, you'll notice the way this is all grayed out. If you use Command J, Control J, you'll now notice the way they've come into life. You can see they're all highlighted. And we can come to the blend modes here. The top ones here, from darken through to darker color, will all darken them down. Some of them are pretty weird effects. Best of all, though, is multiply. Clicking on this one, Look what it does to the picture. Just try that in some of your images and you'll be surprised at the, the way it can affect it. Really enriches the tones, brings out the colors in the image, but never be afraid to use the opacity slider as well. So just dropping the opacity down to something in that area. That looks pretty good. Let's just take a look. We've now gone from that to that. Right, to just tone these down here, these rather eager leaves, trying to get in on the scene as well. We're going to come across, we're going to pick up our freehand lasso, and I'm going to drag them around our rather eager leaves, and down around this area, up around the top like that, and there it is. There's our selection. Dropping down, we're going to come to hue saturation. Now with hue saturation, we've got hue saturation, we've got lightness. Now with lightness, if we move this back and forth, you can see the way that's what we're working on. You go from white to black, but we're going to drop it down. We're going to be a bit more sensible into this sort of area like this. And we're going to come to saturation, and I'm going to drop the saturation down a touch or two as well. And if I just click on this, you can see there's the before, there's the after. You can see the way we can now tone that into the picture. Looking pretty good like this. However, one thing, I didn't feather that selection. I'll show you the workaround first of all, then I'll come back to CS6. Right, now with this, if you just press the Alt or the Option key, come across to the mask, click on it, so press Alt or Option, click on this, there it is. That's now brought the mask into the main frame. We can see the way, you can see how hard that selection is. If you go to Filter, if you go to Blur, if you go to Gaussian Blur, now with Gaussian Blur, just bring your cursor out, click on this area here, just drop this back. There it is with a nice hard edge. Now the more you bring this across, let's bring it across to that area there, you can see the way it's dropping out there. And you can see that's how much you're now feathering it by. I'm going to bring it into something like that area there. So what have we got? We've got 61.9. I'm going to click Cancel. I'm going to click on the little eye icon. That's as you would do it in any other version of Photoshop and in Photoshop Elements. Right, in CS6, I'm just going to click on the mask. That's going to bring us back to this position here. That's it with the hue saturation. So just click on the mask and now bring the feather across. And as you start to bring the feather across, you can see the way it's sort of dropping out around that area there. I'm going to bring it into roughly this point here. And you can see what almost the same sort of area, the same region as we had with the figures when we used the Gaussian Blur. Quite like the look of that. That looks pretty good. There it is. Job done. Right, for the next stage, we're going to take a look at uh, creating a vignette to give us the pool of light. So I'm going to drag this out over the image like this. We're going to come down once again to the little eye icon here. We're going to come to Hue Saturation, as we did before. We're going to come to the lightness slider. Now, before you start groaning, oh yeah, he's using a vignette again, just let me show you the flexibility that we can use with this. I'm going to drop this down into that area like this. Right, again, the workaround, if you're using any other version of Photoshop, you'll notice that the dark area is over the center. All you do is use Command-I, Control-I to invert it. Command-I, Control-I, that'll invert it. In Photoshop CS6, all you need to do is click on Invert, 
Now use the feather, so back in other versions of Photoshop and Photoshop Elements, if you bring that sort of mask to the fore as we did before, pressing that Alter option, then go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, you can do the same sort of thing, but just blur it out to an area that you're comfortable with, something like that looks pretty good. OK, we can now come back to this. We can actually drop this down. We can bring it in a little bit like this so we can start to play with that. Incidentally, you can make it dark. There's a dark vignette. You can actually make a white vignette as well. So it's entirely up to you. It is really flexible. And the other thing we can do is if we just come onto this, just make sure you're working on the mask. In other words, make sure that framework is over the mask area there. You can pick up your move tool, you can click down and you can now move this lighten effect around. You'll notice as well the way it's moving around in the layers panel there, that mask is moving around. But there's more. Command T or Control T puts the transform tool in. Now we can move it around like this, but not only can we move it around, but you can also change the way that the lighting is coming through. So you may want to sort of bring it out like that you may want to drop it down in the foreground or bring it through like this you can also right click you can also come and you can do things like distort and just pull it out in the foreground area like that and if I pull it out in this area and perhaps just bring it in on the center part there so you can really sort of change the way it's looking you'll notice the way it's sort of changing its look there you can move this back and forth into that area that's giving it a nice pool of light there, just bringing that out again, just want to get over those bottom leaves there, just suddenly notice that, so just bringing that through, and again bringing that over like this, there it is, just double clicking, job done. Don't forget, you can still come to this, you can still play with the opacity and just perhaps drop it down a little bit more. Let's give ourselves a little bit more space here, so just dropping this down. The next stage I was doing this and uh, somebody piped up and they said, yeah, that looks pretty good, but the colour of the bluebells. And I thought, right, OK. Colour of the bluebells. What colour would you like them to be? Well, we're going to come, once again, we're going to go to hue saturation. Now, with hue saturation, I'm going to pick up my finger with the arrow going through it. And I think you're pretty safe to say in other versions of Photoshop, just select from the drop down menu there, blue. But if you bring it out, if I click down, Yes, we've gone to blue. That's the color range we're working in. Now, if I come to saturation, if we move this across, yes, we can make our bluebells much more saturated. But bluebells are quite a wonderful flower. They actually change in color quite dramatically from when they first come out through the, the whole sort of period that bluebells are in flower. They're changing their colors slightly the whole time. But you come to the hue slider, and you can actually, there it is, a much paler bluebell by moving it across to the left, taking the saturation up a little bit more. Or you can move it across and you can actually get purple bells, you can get pink bells, you can get orange, yeah, perhaps you won't go as far as that. Perhaps a nice blue, blue bell would do nicely, perhaps just making it a slightly lighter colour blue, something like this. And again, never be afraid to just use the lightness and in with that there as well, just back a touch, that's better. And there it is. Don't forget, the whole thing is completely adjustable right the way through with all of these, you see just the subtle effect there with the colour. I think what I will do as well with this is just change this to red. I just want to bring the colour out on the leaves here. Once again, you can come down, you can just click, it's gone to the red there. Just take the saturation up on that red, that looks pretty good like that. And there it is. Right, so, let's take a look. This is what we started off with. That's darkening down the image using the blend modes, just changing it to multiply. Again, we can adjust this. This is adjusting that sort of just removing the distraction from that top area there. There's our vignette, which we moved around. We got into position to get the lighting through in the areas that we wanted. And if we just take a look, that's finally just changing the color of our bluebells. As I say, it's one of my favorite techniques for painting in light. You can just change, you can adjust it, you can move it around, do whatever you want to do with it. But go on. Give it a try. Until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.